Hello and welcome to this um, design practice module 39. This is one of the penultimate modules which are intended to study of forms and shapes uh, just by some basic definitional aspects and later on trying to imbibe some techniques, some calculations for representing such shapes in a uh, computer aided drafting package or system. So what the intention behind this lecture would be typically is to how you can in an engineering manner represent the forms and shapes at least to the very basic level in terms of coordinates and how you could uh, compute the coordinates in a manner when the forms and shapes change from one orientation to other so that it can be replotted again to generate the new uh, object in its new orientation. So <laughs> with that we start this particular lecture. So if you look at definitions uh, related to some of these aspects of shapes and forms, these are two very important uh, aspects uh, for the aesthetic design of any product. So shape uh, you, you can define as a closed two-dimensional object uh, typically shown by a, by a line or an edge. Uh, obviously a two-dimensional object may be something which has height and width. Okay? For example, uh, these are a variety of different shapes. You could have a square shown here for example or octagon or triangle or hexagon or rectangle. These are all different shapes. So these are two dimensional in nature, limited to one plane, having only two either height or uh, either height and depth, sorry, height and width or length and width. Uh, so you could typically uh, analyze some of these geometrical shapes in terms of mathematical equations. And when we talk about representation of such shapes, particularly in a computer aided design or drafting package, we would be concerned with how we can transform or represent such shapes uh, and then maybe magnify them, rotate them, uh, linearly translate them, uh, so on and so forth. So uh, we will try to see or visit this in the next few slides about how uh, such alterations can be made. So the shapes that you are seeing here are very regular in nature and so they are easier, uh, they are easier to handle. However, uh, the real life shapes which exist in particularly animate objects, uh, you know, living matter are, are quite complex. These are some illustrations of what two dimensional shapes could look like in real life. Okay? And as you can see here, these are far, far away from the, uh, the regular shapes that you saw in the last slide. So these are called organic shapes and in fact, a lot of theory revolves around how to represent such shapes. Uh, there is of course a, um, a component of artistry uh, which, is, which is involved here but more so from a well-defined uh, engineering point of view or from a computer aided design point of view. So uh, these are the different aspects related to shapes. There are of course um, three-dimensional forms which uh, talk about a three-dimensional object on, on a picture plane let's say. For example, these are forms, okay, forms of a cylinder a cylindrical uh, object or a spherical object for example. So forms uh, typically would have all three dimensions, height, width as well as uh, uh, the depth and uh, forms could be uh, either real forms or implied forms. Um, <coughs> these are some of the regular forms, uh, for example, a cone, a sphere, a cylinder, a pyramid, all these different three-dimensional shapes or three-dimensional forms are uh, being illustrated here. Okay? And uh, when we talk about CAD and how to represent uh, these kind of forms, they involve solid models. And uh, there would be uh, some, uh, you know, just because of the addition of a third dimension, uh, some extension in the computational domain when we talk about taking a form uh, into uh, consideration and trying to do various uh, operations like translation, rotation, uh, magnification or even uh, joining two or more different forms uh, in electronic space. So we will talk about how to represent with the third dimension added such forms. Uh, the complexities would be slightly higher uh, on the computational side when we talk about laying out forms on a, um, the electronic space of a CAD package. Um, 
<coughs> so when we talk about uh, different ways so that we can use uh, to turn a shape into a form, uh, there can be a detailed contour line drawing. For example, the line here uh, gives an idea of the third dimension. Let's say this line particularly or even this line uh, right here. So uh, there are certain contour lines which would be giving an idea of the 3D perspective, although you are drawing on a 2D plane. Uh, there can be uh, value added through shading. Uh, you can see these uh, particular areas or shades which have been added to create an aspect of 3D into an otherwise 2D uh, plane object, which otherwise would have been just a, uh, just a shape. Uh, but just because of the practice of shading, it has changed uh, domains into representing a 3D object. There could also be a perspective uh, just as represented here, which would give you an idea of uh, a form okay, uh, coming into existence. And so let's actually now look at, uh, given these basic definitions, how do we uh, manipulate them in an electronic space of a, of a CAD package. So, so today, uh, it's need, needless to almost define that any engineering organization is in a large need of uh, a repeated iterative designing processes and uh, a lot of design is about visualization because when we are talking about a certain product, a certain shape, a certain size, um, a more appropriate way to look at it is to lay it out uh, on either an electronic space or on a pen and paper in order to be um, sure about how, how it is or what kind it is. And so therefore, uh, there is a huge uh, application of computer-aided designing for uh, doing this uh, kind of representation. So typically, all CAD systems uh, do have a database which would be related to the models which are generated. There are, of course, an application software. Uh, there is a graphic utility. Uh, there are certain device drivers. And uh, this all would classify together as an operating system which will handle the data from the database and give various um, inputs and outputs uh, in terms of a variety of devices like printers or plotters. Uh, of course, it will also have a user interface where there would be uh, the, the layout of what has to be really done to this database. Okay. So, That's how CAD systems are uh, planned. There are, in fact, uh, four different types uh, of CAD systems. You have a mainframe-based system, mini-computer-based, uh, workstation-based, and microcomputer-based systems, which exist. Uh, when we talk about the basic underlying uh, logic behind the CAD, uh, it all boils down to coordinate plotting or coordinate mapping. Uh, any object could be represented by different coordinates in an X, Y, Z space. And then the manipulation of an object uh, or the introduction of different aspects related to the object could be in terms of, again, um, utilizing the, the coordinates and plotting. And so therefore, if anything related to uh, joining or uh, magnification or translating the object or rotating the object or doing several other operations is carried out, it, surmise, it, it, sub, it summarizes to uh, a change in the coordinate structure and the new coordinates reported could give you a very good aspect of how uh, the new reoriented object would look like. So that's what uh, is popularly also known as geometric transformation, one which gives you a changed coordinate, given an old coordinate and a set of operations to that old coordinate. So when we talk about such geometric transformations, and the first thing which comes to our mind is a, a two-dimensional transformation. So let's say we are talking about uh, just a small point in space. Uh, there is a XY plane uh, where there is a point. Let's say this point is about uh, the, the coordinates X and Y. And uh, it is at a certain distance which is equal to the radius vector r from the origin OO of this xy space. So 
if we wanted to translate this point ahead by a certain distance d, uh, for example, we would like, let's say, to change this position to a different location somewhere here, we call it v dash and represent this through a translation uh, at a different coordinate x dash y dash, where x dash comes out to be equal to x plus some movement dx, which is in the direction of x. So this particular distance, which has been moved by the point in the x space, uh, is dx. And similarly, y dash, which becomes y plus dy, and this particular distance right here is dy. So we would like to actually define the, uh, the points and the distance in a column vector form so that it is easier uh, for us to compute. Uh, you have to remember that so that it is easier uh, to calculate or compute when we talk about uh, a large amount of data um, undergoing such translational activities. So here the V dash coordinate can be represented through a column vector uh, X dash Y dash and uh, the vector V can be represented through another set of coordinates X, Y. So this is how it is represented in terms of a column vector. And there is of course a distance matrix, which is the translation distance, which has happened to this particular point in space, V going into V dash. We call that distance matrix DX, DY. So we'll of course have a, uh, an addition operation giving this whole translational translation activity or translation of the point in space given by v dash equal to v plus d. Um, in other words, what we are saying is that the column vector x dash y dash is equal to the column vector x y plus the distance vector dx dy. So that's how in a simple manner you're going to represent what we know as translation. Translations could be typically done for uh, different shapes. For example, uh, we can represent a shape, let's say a triangular shape through uh, certain coordinates and then uh, try to change the shape by taking it to a different uh, place through translation and look at the different coordinates which are uh, going to again describe the shape at that new coordinate uh, where it arrives at. And so such operations are abundantly being done in CAD packages. So let's look at an example problem where you will understand uh, what I am talking about a little better. So uh, we talk about this triangle here, right here, which is triangle ABC, as you can see uh, in this figure. And uh, it moves to a new position A dash, P dash, C dash, uh, which amounts to the centroid of this triangle, which was at X, Y coordinate earlier, uh, and which has moved to the new coordinates X dash, Y dash. Uh, by exactly dx in the x direction and dy in the y direction. So that's how it has moved. And dy, of course, is uh, decrementing the value of y and dx is incrementing the value of x. Uh, that's how this system has been laid out. And we want to determine what are the new coordinates a dash, b dash, c dash, given the abcs of 1, 3 and 4, 5, 5, 3.5. So if we just applied the, uh, the linear translation uh, and the characteristic equation that was developed in the last step where uh, V dash represented V plus the distance vector. So in this case, we do have a vector uh, which is actually the, the coordinates X A dash, Y A dash, Similarly, xb dash, yb dash, and xc dash, yc dash, which are comprised of the coordinates xa, ya, with a translated distance which is equal to, in this particular case, the distance vector has uh, values dx7 and dy minus 2. So let's just put this value here, 7 and 2, okay? Uh, with a minus sign, uh, T represents transpose, for example, uh, where the columns become rows and vice versa. So here also, the uh, 
x dash, x b dash and y b dash are represented in terms of again the coordinates x b y b and the same distance space uh, and similarly the transformation is represented in c or the point c in the same manner. So obviously if we put the values of all the different coordinates of a b c as represented here we should be able to obtain the new coordinates of a dash b dash c dash. So a dash coordinate therefore uh, has values 8 and 1. Similarly, B dash has the values 11, 3, and C dash has values related to 12 and 1.5. So, we can just perform a quick check uh, right about here where we talk about that because of this translation, did it change anything to do uh, anything to with, with the overall shape? And in this particular case, as the three edges, A, B, B, C, and A, C define the triangle, uh, it's important to find out whether the edge lengths changed because of this translation. So we'll do a computation where we will be able to find out what was the earlier length A, B, and what is the new length A dash, B dash, and then repeat this over the other two edges uh, to, to, to get an idea of whether anything changed while doing this numerical transition process from one point to another. And so let's look at uh, the lengths of different edges. Mind you, the, the edges are the way to show different uh, shapes as I had illustrated earlier. So multiple edges together could uh, be able to produce something which is either very regular, like a variety of regular figures, hexagon, pentagon, triangle, rectangle, um, octagon, so on and so forth, or even irregular figures where there are aspects of curves coming out because of the animate nature of something that is being represented. So the lens of different edges in this particular case, let's say if we talk about AB, comes out as simply XA minus XB square plus YA minus YB square. So in case of AB, if we find out uh, the total length would happen to be 1 minus 4 square plus 3 minus 5 whole square and this comes out to be root of 13. And similarly if we had to look at a dash b dash the same thing gets illustrated here. The only difference here is the change in the new coordinates x a dash and x b dash. Similarly y a dash and y b dash. And this results in the very same 8 minus 11 square plus 1 minus 3 whole square, again the same root 13. Similarly, if we looked at how BC is going to change, or CD is going to change, CA is going to change, you're going to say, see the same uh, repetition of the lens, even if uh, the object has been translated. For example, in case of BC, this length could be found out through 5 minus 4 square plus 3.5 minus 5 square, uh, which is again root of 3.25. In case of B dash C dash after the modified coordinates, you could represent the same through 12 minus 11 square plus 1.5 minus 3 square, which again gives you the same value 3.25. Similarly for CA, you find the same uh, X, C minus XA to be 5 minus 1 square on the uh, X coordinate, okay, and 3.5 minus 3 whole square on the y coordinate. This happens to be about 16.25. Similarly, if I looked at c dash a dash, this happens to be 12 minus 8 square plus 1.5 minus 1 square happens to be about the same 16.25. So as you realize here that we have translated the figures and the lengths of the different edges, which are the characteristics of representing this bounded region by the edges, which is the shape, the triangle, it doesn't change. So therefore, the triangle merely translates in unison. All the three points do the similar kind of translational efforts and go to a new location to constitute the same triangle as were before. So the shape doesn't get changed really because of such a transformation. And therefore, we can easily call this translation of different shapes. You could actually also have uh, things related to scaling uh, because obviously there may be a need of a shape to get magnified many times. Uh, cat packages are so handy that you could actually blow up or enlarge an image for almost several times 
to see the final object in, in place. So the figures can be magnified typically by using the scaling transformation. So scaling in uh, two dimensions is a sort of a, uh, you can say, a stretching mode through which an object uh, which has certain coordinates can be blowed up uh, with certain scale factors in both x as well as y directions. And uh, this leads to uh, the, uh, the overall blown up image is, uh, the, uh, that is, for example, if the extended coordinates, the, the modified coordinates because of scaling transformation are all connected together, the blown up image appears. So let's look at some of the uh, methods used in scaling. So let's say we are talking about um, two, uh, a certain point in space x and y uh, where we want to find out what is the impact of scaling x and y along the x and y direction using two scales sx and sy. So these are the scaling terms or scaling factors you can say uh, along the x and y axis respectively. So the modified coordinates x dash and y dash could then be represented as sx times of x and sy times of y where s and s <coughs> and, and so therefore uh, if I wanted to represent this in terms of column vectors we are talking about uh, a vector v dash which is equal to <coughs> a transformant s which is actually the scaling transformant times of the vector v. In other words, we are what we are referring to is um, in terms of coordinates a vector, a column vector comprising x dash y dash which is equal to sx 0 0 sy x and y. So, if you wanted to solve for this end, that is the RHS, it becomes SXX plus 0Y and 0X plus SYY, which is actually nothing but SXX or SYY, similar to what we have here in these equations. So, that's how you scale. This actually uh, term right here is the scaling transformant. There can be an example shown here. Uh, in, in this particular figure, right about uh, this figure here, it's a pentagon and <clears throat> we are showing that this pentagon has a certain length a dash b dash uh, a b and it is being blown up um, so that the edge a b uh, becomes a dash b dash. What we need to prove is that if we wanted to assume some coordinates here, for example, let's say this is x a y a and x b y b and because we are actually um, using a uniform scaling factor 3 in x and y directions we are talking about a matrix um, comprising mostly of 3's and zeros as the scaling transformant and <laughs> this results in new set of coordinates x a prime y a prime and x b prime y b prime. We want to find out what is the relationship between the earlier coordinates a and b and later coordinates a dash b dash in terms of the edge that has been defined through these two points, whether the edge really expands three times or magnifies to three times. So <coughs> we know that the length, length of edge a b in this particular case could be illustrated as x a minus y a, uh, x a minus x b, I'm sorry, whole square uh, plus y a minus y b whole square whole under the root and if I looked at the scaling transformation alone the equation for that would be x a prime y a prime should be equal to 3 0 0 3 x a y a and similarly x b prime y b prime should be again equal to 3 0 0 3 times of x b y b. So typically we are talking about x a dash to be equal to 3 x a according to the transformation equation y a dash to be 3 y a and similarly in case of b x b dash to be equal to thrice x b y b dash equal to thrice y b and so if I looked at the length of a dash b dash 
this is going to be equal to <coughs> 3xa minus 3xb whole square plus 3ya minus 3yb whole square from the set of transformation equations and therefore this happens to be exactly thrice the length of AB. So therefore just by a uniform scale factor of 3 uh, assumed in this problem the length of this edge A dash B dash which is a transformed edge uh, is exactly 3 times the length of the edge AB. So in a way uh, this indicates that the object has been homogeneously scaled there is no difference in the lengths as such because of such scaling function being added and it gives you uh, a basis of carrying out <coughs> the, uh, the transformation uh, for magnification. We can also look at rotation because obviously when we talk about geometrical shapes and then try to uh, manipulate the shapes in space uh, either 2D space or 3D space the question of rotation of those shapes also come into picture. So we uh, can do similar uh, transformation equation for indicating rotation so that the moment we are aware of what is the degree of rotation and the old coordinates we should be able to generate what are the new coordinates uh, through which we can plot and uh, realize in the new orientation um, of the particular object. So uh, let us uh, look into the scaling transformation of a 2D space. We talk about a point V x y here which is at an angle of phi with respect to the origin O okay, and the x direction and it rotates by an another angle incremental angle theta which brings it to um, a coordinate V dash represented through x dash y dash and you know given these values of theta phi and x y can we predict what is x dash y dash. Uh, this rotation is uh, known as positive rotation because the angle is counterclockwise as per the normal sign conventions and this has to be uh, followed very diligently that whenever uh, the direction of rotation is counterclockwise we consider the angle described to be positive and vice versa. So when we look at uh, O V and if we assume the length of the vector to be R essentially we can represent the vector OV in terms of two different components okay, x and y and x mm, is basically equal to r of cos phi and y is equal to r sin phi by normal trigonometry. When we talk about the new angle described here which is theta incremented in other words phi plus theta we are essentially talking about vector OV dash with coordinates x dash y dash where x dash becomes equal to r cos of phi plus theta and uh, <coughs> y dash becomes equal to r sin of phi plus theta. We are not changing the magnitude of the vector because it is merely a rotation about the origin of the vector r of the, of the vector OV to the new position OV dash. So, <coughs> Let us uh, expand these trigonometrically. We can write x dash to be equal to r cos phi cos theta minus r sin phi sin theta. Similarly, we can write y dash to be equal to r sin phi cos theta plus r cos phi sin theta. In other words, if we want to represent the values of r cos phi and r sin theta, the x and y in this equation we can have the transformant x dash to be equal to x cos theta minus y sin theta and the transformant y dash to be equal to x sin theta plus y cos theta. So that is how you can represent the x dash and y dash in terms of the older coordinates x y and the angles and the differential angle theta that has been described for rotation. However, all these operations uh, are carried out at the origin. So that is a word of caution. So whenever you want to perform rotation in 3, 3D space or 2D space, it is probably advisable to bring the figure um, 
and the axis of rotation of the figure to the origin and align it with the origin so that you could use these transformation equations for solving the new coordinates based on which the new orientation can be plotted in a CAD package. So let us now look at uh, just a small example of how uh, we can actually perform rotation realistically. Uh, uh, we can actually represent these first in terms of column vectors. So uh, in this case, x dash y dash can be represented in terms of a column vector cos theta minus sin theta, sin theta, cos theta uh, times of x y, where this vector right here is called the rotational transformant, just as we were uh, mentioning the scaling transformant in the last step, earlier step. A quick example, um, we are concerned with rotating a point uh, A which has coordinates given through these two values right here, 347.3792 and 149.0298 to a point A dash somewhere in space here through executing a rotation um, of 35 degrees of the circular table on which the point was kept and 35 degrees being in the counterclockwise direction and we would like to determine what are the new positions here okay, given by question marks given the 35 degree rotation and the older coordinates. So we just simply use the transformation equation in this particular case x dash and y dash the new coordinates can be actually represented through cos of 35 minus sine of 35 sine of 35 and these are all in degrees cos of 35 degrees times the old coordinates which are having an x value of 347.3792 and 149.0298 in other words the x dash and y dash this particular case happens to be 199.0764 and 321.3266 that's how you can represent the x dash and y dash in this particular case so simple uh, transformation uh, in the sense that whatever old coordinates were there and whatever angle of rotation was there, you knew these two variables, the new coordinates are very easy to find out. So this is how you can actually perform rotational transformation. So uh, we can actually revise all this to 3D space just as we were doing in 2D and uh, try to go from shapes into forms, particularly when we are talking about three-dimensional forms, it is important to add a coordinate axis uh, to those forms. Uh, remember we talked about height, depth as well as uh, width. So in this particular case, I would like to summarize by saying that if we take all this into 3D, the trans translation uh, and the rotation and also the scaling changes uh, in a slightly different manner. For example, you are adding a new coordinate z dash here and the translation equation can then be represented as the column vector x dash y dash z dash is equal to the column vector x y z plus the distance vector in this case the distance vector, vector has three components dx dy and dz along all the three directions. We can also talk about scaling in the uh, 3D which is slightly different here for example in scaling what we can use is x dash y dash z dash and that can be represented in terms of the scales along the three different two different directions uh, represented to three different directions represented through scale factors sx, sy and X, sz times of uh, the coordinates x, y and z meaning thereby it would result in something like sx into x, sy into y, sy into z okay something like this and then obviously for rotation we will use uh, because we are talking about 3D space now the question of axis of rotation comes uh, because obviously one has to define the axis about which the rotation is taking place. Rotation typically would happen in a 2D plane but about a certain axis and so uh, if supposing we were talking about uh, the rotation about the Z axis which was which was which was actually the case what we investigated by the rotation of the point in that event the z dash doesn't change because obviously uh, z is the axis of rotation and the only changes which are recorded are in case of x dash and y dash and we can change uh, or record x dash to be equal to 
x cos theta minus y sin theta. Remember how we derived it in the last step. Similarly, y dash to be x sin theta plus y cos theta. So, I would like to put together in matrix form the same thing through transformation equation x dash y dash z dash equals to a uh, transformant which is cos of theta minus sin of theta 0, um, sin of theta cos of theta 0 and 0, 0, 1 times x, y, z column vector. So, this essentially represents these set of equations. Similarly, we will have two more different rotations about different axes. For example, about if the rotation were about y axis, then uh, the transformation equation would be x bar, y bar, z bar equals <coughs> um, 1, 0, 0, 0 cos theta minus sin theta, 0 sin theta cos theta times of x, y, z and if the rotation were about the z axis, uh, I am sorry, the, the x axis, uh, this I made a typo, this is about the x axis because the x does not change here, I am sorry and this is about the y axis. So, if we make it about the y axis, then in that event, the transformation equation becomes x dash y dash z dash equals cos theta 0 sin theta 0 1 0 and minus sin of theta 0 cos theta times of x y z. So, although a little complex in uh, <coughs> overall strategy uh, in a very simple manner one can really find out what is going to be the new orientation of the coordinates once it goes through this transformation process about uh, rotation about a certain axis whether x, y or z. So, in a nutshell this is how you would uh, like to represent all the 3D transformations. You have already done 2D transformations and in a way all both of these are necessary for manipulating a variety of shapes whether regular or irregular um, in the 2D or 3D space respectively. So, I have given you an illustration of some basic definitions related to shapes and forms and how you will do the backward uh, computation or back end computation uh, of what happens in the front end of a CAD, CAD package when we talk about uh, designing or putting together these shapes and forms uh, in electronic space. So, thank you very much for patiently listening to me.